This is a review of last week and a recollection. And we are lucky enough to have with us two people this evening who can give us a recollection of what it has been like to go through last week's talk. So therefore, let me first just read the paragraph that I chose to explore, <coughs> and it's a very famous one. It's so well known among three or four people that I know that it's often discussed. It's in Plato's Republic 517b, book seven. Then we must apply this image, my dear Glaucon, says Socrates, after going through the allegory of the cave in the upper world, to all we've been saying, the world of our sight is like the habitation in prison, the firelight here to the sunlight here. The ascent and the view of the upper world is the rising of the soul into the world of mind. Put it so and you will not be far from my own surmise, since that's what you want to hear. But God knows if it is really true. <clears throat> At last, what appears to me is that in the world of the known, the last of all is the idea of the good. And with what toil it is to be seen. This is an object to be seen by the mind. And seen, this must be inferred to be the cause of all right and beautiful things. Which gives birth, which gives birth, source, give birth to the sun in the visible world and to sunlight. And he calls the sun the king in the visible world. And seeing this must be inferred to be the cause of all right and beautiful things for all. Which gives light, pardon me, which gives birth to light and the king of light in the world of sight. And in the world of mind, and in the world of mind, herself the queen, herself the queen, produces truth and noose or reason as our translator calls it. And she must be seen by one who is to act wisely, publicly and privately. I change reason to wisely. And she must be seen by one who is to act wisely, both publicly and privately. Well, if she's the queen, then there's a king. Here's the queen, the sunlight. Here's the king, the sun. Therefore, this is a interesting royal pair. In the world of mine, the king and the queen, in the world of the visible realm, there's a king and the queen. The queen in the world of the mind gives birth to the sun, the creator source of the sun and so sunlight. It's the cause of all beautiful things and what is right produces truth and reason. Now, the last time um,
this is also the highest object of knowledge, the last of all, the highest object of knowledge. And last week we talked about this being when one gains a vision of it. This is uh, a bliss. This is a pure, sometimes called the perfection of beauty. And therefore it suggests that beyond this perfection of beauty and bliss, there is something yet higher called the king or the good and the one. And we mentioned in many talks, I'll just mention it briefly, the whole object of book seven, when the arts are, are brought together into a unity <clears throat> and their kinship and community is seen one to the other, then you can enter into the game called the dialectic. And the dialectic is to how to grasp in some way the transition from here to here. That's the whole goal of the dialectic. That means leaving this. And so we also read one or two quotes just to give you one more touch to bring you back to it. Because Socrates is quite interested in, in um, the fact that as he sees it, there are some people who reach the state of the, I the idea of the good. The idea, the word idea, of course, means to behold. And that's a blissful, beatific state. And he said they strive to remain above. And he says he doesn't think that that's proper and they should be brought down and returned to the world of men. And therefore, there's a return, which in Plato's Allegory of the Cave is that after being in the upper world and seeing what is there to be seen and known, then the philosopher must then return into the world of men and share whatever it is that they have as well as contribute what he can to their way of being. So therefore there is an object to strive for, it's experienced, and it's a return. Well, we had fun last time doing this. And um, what was your week like? the past week. Could you tell us, please? You had a very interesting dream you told me a few minutes ago. Yes. Would you care to state it and we can look at it? Sure. Thank you. Um, it was the night of last class. and went home, went to bed. Uh, had trouble falling asleep because my mind wouldn't stop working on this problem, and um, which at one point I was able to drift off to sleep, and I remember having in, in the dream a physical release, and it was um, physically it was a, it was a euphoric sensation, uh, which caused me to rise up out of what seemed to be a, a canyon. Um, my whole body was lifted up um, past the canyon and, and continued up into, yeah, into the sky until I could actually see the curve of the earth and just hovered there with this, this amazing sensation. Uh, and being able to look down and see with, with a, a clarity and perspective from, from being above.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what effect did that have on your concern about these issues that you were exploring, we were exploring last week? Um, I, f I felt that the dream was was a cause of what we were what we were looking at, mm -hmm. and because the the feeling, the sensation was so strong, and the the clarity that it gave, and the perspective that it gave, for the next day, I was actually able to to tap it, to get it back a few times, um, but then began to lose it as each day passed during the week, and. I felt what was key was to get back into, you know, I kept thinking about this because I felt like this is what brought that dream about. This mm -hmm. is, this was what was, uh, was pivotal. And um, so my, my, my mind hasn't been able to let go of this for an entire week. Mm -hmm. Now that you recall it, do you want to add anything more to it? Because I'd yeah, like to, what? Actually, um, it, um, once, well, there are a couple of things. One was what I, I told you earlier, but I left out, was that I was very much aware that while I was floating or flying, you know, the, the, the sensation that I had was, was not a result of the flying, rather it was the other way around, um, that, that this, this, this amazing sensation or this release was what had caused me to be able to rise above. And also, once being in the sky and looking down with such a sense of seeing, you know, seeing the canyon and, and seeing the terrain, there were a lot of mountains and it was, it was very beautiful. And it was seeing what I normally saw, uh, very commonplace, my, from a whole different perspective. There, it was, there was a great deal of beauty to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Uh, could you uh, talk for a few minutes about this curious word, uh, the thing that you wanted to get back to and then you lost it, and you went back to a clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, just talk about it for a few minutes. Like, what was it like? Having that clarity, um, just a wholeness. Um, wholeness? Not being a, not going back to it, there was something about that wholeness and that clarity. I felt like it would always be there to get back to. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a, a sense of of rush or a need to hold on to it so much. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to find your way back to it by. Um. <laughs> um, by figuring this thing out. Mm. <laughs> by figuring <laughs> this thing no, out. No, I'm being somewhat sarcastic. Um, that was that was what was. That was what caused the dream to occur. I stopped trying to figure it out. It was, it, it wasn't coming through an intellectual mm -hmm. endeavor. Mm -hmm. It was coming from more of just allowing myself to know. I, mm -hmm. Just seeing, it was, I can't describe it. Mm -hmm. With the mind? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, did, were you uh, in some way involved in trying to figure this out as well? Very much so. Uh, I also had a pretty interesting dream. Uh, could you share? Sure. Hold on. <laughs> You were actually in this dream. Mm -hmm. But you were a younger man. And I had gone back to some school where I had I had graduated and I was now going back to just kind of reconnect with everything that had ever happened to me through all the years until I had graduated. Mm -hmm. So I went into the I went into the school and I went into a classroom and it was you were there and I handed you all of my school transcripts and you sat down and looked at all of them and I was just kind of standing waiting and you said well I see that you had a quite a number of failures. Mm -hmm. And you said, but I'm sure that there were good reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, well, no, 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 they were honest failures. I just on the whole bit. I didn't get that last part. I, I said, well, I, I don't know if there were good reasons. They were, gen they were honest failures. They were what? They were honest failures. They were on a honest failures. They were genuine failures that I had. They were genuine favored failures. Had, well, okay. They, well, going, well, that, that's okay. I just want to make sure I get the words. Well, they going. were genuine failures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I was just really owning that they had been my failures. You were. You seemed a lot lighter about it. I wanted to kind of say, no, these were my failures. So what would you say you were doing in this statement then? They were genuine failures. It felt like a little like an old pattern to me. It felt like I was caught in something that really wasn't important in you, and it wasn't important to you, but I was trying to, almost like a sense of guilt or shame, that kind of stuff. It seemed like we were reviewing my whole life here in a, in a school or something. And I was planning. Yeah. I was planning to see other people who had graduated. Mm -hmm. And it seemed that I had come, it, it, it seemed apparently that I wasn't going to find those people at your school. And you said that, you said, well, I don't think these people will be here. Mm -hmm. So I was going to leave to go on to a diff another, a different school and see if they would be at this other school. So you decided you'd go to the other to school. Other school and, and, uh, and, you, and, you were walk and you walked out with me. I was going to go try and find these people to connect my past together at a different school. Is that where it ended? Sorry? Is that where it ended? No. It ended in a pretty strange thing. Go ahead. You walked out with me, and we walked out of this classroom, and we're walking along the school grounds along a path together. And all of a sudden, the path just kind of does a big swoop, and we fly up in the air, you and I. And we're now flying up in the air, but you're very relaxed about it. And I'm looking over at you. And we start to come down, and we're coming down through some branches of, of, of a tree. And there are two guns hidden in the branch of this tree, up high up in the tree. There's two guns. And you look at me and you say, 
uh, some people think they need these these things in a, in a, in any in case of any emergency. And I see the two guns, and we're, now we're kind of falling back down to earth. And that's the whole thing that we've kind of got flipped up in the air, and we're flying, and here's these guns that might somehow be a security. And you're saying, but you don't take the guns. You just comment that they're there. They're, they're hidden away up there. Uh, like in a, for, I don't know, for, for in a case like this, when you're kind of flying and out of control. Um, and then I landed on the ground, and was really, and, and by the time when I woke up, the last thing I, that I recalled of the dream was just a sense that I probably wasn't going to go to this other school, I was just going to go on my way to whatever that would be. But I thought about the guns a lot when I woke up, I wasn't sure what that might be. <clears throat> what was it like this last week for you between these two talks? Uh, for me, it was a sense of being very close to understanding something, yearning for that understanding, working at that understanding, and perhaps a fear that once again I wasn't going to understand something that I know is true inside of me. Maybe I... Maybe I won't get it. That it's the most important thing in my life right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned in the dream that the uh, person in the dream was relaxed. How were you in that flight? I was feeling all the kind of that kind of nervous stomach feeling when you're flying, sort of a feeling like wow, it came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, we were just whoop, you know. Walking down a path and all of a sudden, boom, we're way flying up in the air, kind of mm -hmm. out of control. Mm -hmm. So I was sort of trying to get a handle on the whole thing mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, each of these dreams are very obviously profound. And uh, let me go back to this one first. Um, that sense of clarity, could you go back to it for a moment? Um, you also said it was something euphoric. It's a strong physiological, just... Um, As if what? <clears throat> Every cell of my body had been switched on. It was just... And therefore you could do... Anything. Hmm? Anything. Anything. You fly, you name it. It was, there was a very sense of, of that kind of certainty. Um, and therefore not needing to do anything. Go ahead. That's it. <clears throat> Yet not needing to do anything. Right. Yeah. But that, that, that was there, that the power to, to, to do anything. The, the euphoria, like you said, was a very physiological uh, sensation. That was what, that was what lasted. That just momentarily, I would throughout the day feel this click of congruency, and that would just, I would feel that, that, which I've never felt before. I mean, it was, it was very strong, and I would just catch a glimmer of it. Mm -hmm. I think there it is. That's. Need to go zero in on that moment, that right now, to get it. Yet there was no need to hold on to it. Right? Yeah. 
it was always and it will always be there. Mm -hmm. well, remember that? Mm -hmm. um, what, did you notice at these times when you were trying to get back to it, or did to some degree back to it, what it was you let you had to do or you did? Uh, by heavens, it's the same question as here in the cavern. Um, you mentioned before what happened to you in the cave, in the cavern, canyon way. What was it again? What, the release? Yes. Uh -huh. right. Could you compare that state with this? Talk about it. Um, the moments where throughout the day where I would, I would start to feel it, it would be a letting go within that second, that moment. And that that, that is where that lies, that feeling, that sensation. If you were to be called upon to help people understand the idea of release and letting go, how might you express it? What might you say about that moment? I've noticed that when you're talking, you're doing, it's as if you're doing something also in front of your face or to your face. Let me ask you in another way. Uh, right. <clears throat> this letting go, yes. uh, did you notice that it was centered in the face? <laughs> no, I didn't notice that. When you're letting go, was there a relaxation that took place? My entire body. The entire body? Yeah. Right. Including the face? Yes. I don't know. Because as you described it a few minutes ago, you're, it's in front of your face. You're making this motion. And that's why I was asking. Yeah. Good. Uh, okay. And I'll tell you why I say that. Okay. Because very often, a great deal of our attention is rooted in our face. That's our persona, our mask, that's the way we appear. People look at our face, not our hands. Right. So therefore, in wanting to appear in one way or the other, to whatever degree, right, the musculature of the face tensifies in certain areas. And a letting go often can be felt there. Mm -hmm. Right? Ah, relaxing. Yeah. I get it in jaw. Yeah, jaw. My jaw has been very sore this week. Hmm. Which? Well, you see, you're trying to get it back. You lose it. You try to get back. Mm -hmm. So you're doing something, mm -hmm. right? You're trying to get back to letting go of that release because that's what mm -hmm. brought you to float upward. That gave you the clarity, mm -hmm. and that's what you would like to return to. Mm -hmm. Is it now? It's real fun to talk about what it's like to be here, looking at the whole earth and to be engaged in the beauty that one sees from such heights, and that's all good. But that's what you want to study. The release, see, the release. Because you know that's the doorway into clarity. Now, I'm going to move away from that, but first I'd like you to uh, See whether you can give me something else about the clarity. If you had to say it was like something, what would you say it's like?
it was just, it was a complete calmness. There a was, complete calmness? Yes, there was... no need for any type of, of worry. Everything, everything made sense. It just... Mm -hmm. Just the way it was. Just the way it was. Just the way it was. Right, just the way it was. And you could see it. Yeah. Everything was, yes, was just the just way it was. Just the way it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Thank you for your reflection. Let's go back to this one now, shall we? There's a contrast here between two schools. The one you find yourself in, and you want to connect yourself with some of the old grads. And you go to it with uh, old school transcripts, and you show them to this Pierre in the dream. And he says, I see you've had a number of failures. I'm sure there are good reasons for that. How was that said? It was said, I'm real clear about this, it was said with a very deep sense of understanding. Like you saw through all of it and understood more about what might entail someone's failure mm -hmm. versus just an F on the paper. Mm -hmm. It was almost like you said it was a kind of warm sense of humor or something. One what? There was almost a kind of warmth and humor in the way you said it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like you saw something I couldn't see about that failure. Yes, yes, yes. But you did see a certain kind of understanding. Absolutely. Uh, you called it absolutely. Uh, talk about it in the, in the dream. What was that like, seeing that? Seeing this of the understanding that I saw in you as this teacher in the dream? Or do you mean or? Mm hmm See, I, 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 was, I was talking to someone who was wise. It was very clear to me. I could, just, I could feel it in the room. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a kind of, uh, I, my sense was, what am I holding on to here? Mm -hmm. Kind of, what am I doing here? Yes, what am I doing here? Yes. Now, what would you say that means in respect to what was just said and what you saw? What I saw was my own, perhaps, lack of understanding of what was meant. But you saw this person had a certain kind of understanding yes. which you found which I felt a great connection towards and attraction towards. Ah. So in seeing this, you're also attracted to that. Yes. Right? You're attracted to that understanding. Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. You could feel it. I can feel it in the dream. A kinship. What? A kinship there, then. Is that right? Yeah. This, ah. this person seemed to understand me, even though they never really met me. But, but, but? Even though they hadn't met me until I walked in this room, they seemed to really have a, a wise understanding of who mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. They could read me very quickly. Mm -hmm. So? They seemed to want to help. Yeah. Yeah, wanted that kind of help, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, this is where the dream shifts, you see, because given all of that, what do you then do? What I recall is that I, I didn't say, well, I guess I'm in the wrong place. I'll go to this other school and try and see if that's where I'm supposed to be. You said they were genuine failures. Oh, about the failures, sorry. Right? Um, you're, you're making kind of light with some understanding, and I, I'm very kind of, my, my experience was I was just trying to own everything about myself. You're trying to own it. You're trying to own that. No, I feel, right? no, I, feel that I won't try and skirt the issue. Right. I wanted to own that. Yeah. Right. I'm courageous enough to own my faith. Felt a little zealous on that part. Right. Rather than slugging up and saying, well, yeah, there was probably some good reasons for some of that. Well, you see, would you not agree there's something curious here? Right. Uh, I wanted to own my own failures. They were genuine failures. Uh, that person sees at that moment very clearly, wisely, that there were good reasons for that. And what are you doing then? I wanted to own my failures, all of me. Are you agreeing or? No, I'm resisting. Resisting or uh, is that resisting or holding a different position or my sense is I'm just being very terribly hard on myself. Pardon? I'm just being terribly hard on myself. You're being terribly hard on yourself. Right. With the guys are being tremendously honest. At the same time when someone is being, say it again? Uh, in my manner of doing yep. that is, is this kind of ultra forthrightness that I think no. is going no. to is somehow proving that I'm very honest. Yeah, that's called, in a way, being honest. I will run from my failure. Right. This is in some sense called honest. But again, this honesty is not the same as this. Not at all, no. After I said all that, I can still see that the person was very wise and just kind of understood. Yeah. Yeah. So you're seeing the wisdom in what they're saying, but you're holding a different position. Yeah. And you're holding on to it. Yes. Ah, ah. And so do you stay in that school? Or do you then search out for these other grads? I decide I'll go to another school to yeah, find yeah. Some other people. Yeah, yeah. So here you're then going after that issue, are you not? Yeah. I am. Yeah. And then you both go together. It's like you're going to walk into my car. Yeah, right? yeah. Walk to the car, right? And much to your surprise, uh, you take a trip, yeah. a loft, similar to the other dream, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, the other party is relaxed, Pierre is relaxed in this upward flight, that you're kind of nervous, right? Uh, what is it like in this trip? Um, you said, Go ahead. It's, it's, it's happened out of, kind of out of the blue, out of nowhere, very sudden. We were just walking out of that, now we're flying up in the air at sort of tree line. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm aware that you're very calm and relaxed, and that helps me feel more calm mm -hmm. as I'm coming down from the, uh, you know, we've gone up and now we're going to start coming down. Mm -hmm. And we kind of tend to float down mm -hmm. out of that side of point. Come down to the trees, see the guns in the trees. I'm real aware that you're still the same person you were in the class. You have this understanding, there's this wisdom. We're now flying up in the air unexpectedly, and you're calm there also. Mm -hmm. And seem to understand it, and you, that's when you point out these two guns. 
and sort of giving this little lesson on some people seem, you know, some people have these hidden up here because <coughs> they need them in a crisis or an emergency. Mm -hmm. Do you then notice that this dream then turns on this I wanted to own my failures. There's a kind of honesty to that, you believe. Yeah. Yeah. And that propels you then through the rest of the dream. Yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting if this is your block, holding on to this? Wouldn't that be interesting if it turns out that this idea, however you got it, that I want to hold on to all of me, you know, I want to be honest about everything about me, including my failures, I want to own my failures. Looks like you're going to hold on to them as part of yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Curious, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's maybe. not very relaxed. It's not very relaxed. Yeah, but it is, it might be a direction to focus on this and find out where this came from. Because from this, you then feel, right, I'm being terribly hard on myself. They go together, don't they? Yes. Uh, because of this, then, you're looking for the other school and leave the other one. Yeah. yeah. Curious, isn't it? Well, I thought we'd just look at those dreams for a few minutes before we go back to the issues that we were on. Do you, just, yeah. just, you want to add more to it? No, do you just have any thought about the two guns in the trees? The two guns, yeah, yeah, two guns. yes. The two guns in the tree. Okay. They're there for security reasons. They're hidden. Fine. Some people think they need them. Some people think they need these things. There they are. But there's no need either on your part or on my part in the dream. And therefore you go through that. You don't need what then? What don't you need? You don't need, this so you don't need that security. You don't need it anymore. And now you're back on the earth. So that's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's see then if we can go back to this other curious problem we inherited from last week and see whether or not we might even be able to work some of this into it naturally, hopefully. That hopefully that is natural. <laughs> All right, now you have to try to express the problem as best you can. All right. Let's see if I can represent it and you correct it. All right. Here is an exalted state. There it is. We're calling it the perfection of beauty. Beauty itself. Right. At this, and it, let us say then, it is of the very nature of reality. When we're using the word reality, what we mean here, therefore, is what truly is. All right. The nature of what truly is with a capital I. All right. It has a vividness. most totally vital and 
and it's very clearly of the nature of mind or consciousness. That is to say, we can then express it as, this is something we can call being, right? life or vitality, and using the word in its best sense, intelligence. Intelligence in the sense of the most lofty, most lofty part and expression of the mind. When it is experienced, it is experienced exactly like this. Beauty. That is the way in it is encountered. That's the way in which it is experienced. Wow! Overwhelming beauty. Intellect now can see, right? Intellect can separate and make distinctions and say, but you know what? Everything that I have known up to this point is far less real than what I am encountering now. That's the word being. By contrast, everything I see lacks profoundly a sense of reality, for this is so greater, I will call it being or reality itself. It's not, see, this is, well, not much vitality in things, but if the very nature of being is liveliness, life itself, then this being is not static, it's a living vitality that is nothing other than pure intelligence or mind, which therefore can be clearly perceived as the nature of reality. See, mind makes, see, our intellect makes distinctions in here and perceives it as an overwhelming beauty. Now, that means one, two, three, four, are in some interesting way a unity, a oneness. <clears throat> Now, this sense of beauty cannot in any way be compared with anything that is beautiful. This means that it is so overwhelmingly pure beauty that it's inconceivable that there could ever be anything more than that. It's impossible. To be in it and participate in it even for any period of time, if it were to cost you your life, you would freely give it up to be there. And therefore, that's called being able to be in the presence of what discloses the meaningfulness of life. in that overwhelming experience. Now, let me ask you a question, a curious question. Um, what does Ness mean when it's added to a word, suffix, it means the quality of something, isn't it? Like goodness, the quality of good. So therefore, would you not agree, uh, this is not the one, but it, <laughs> Whatever the one is, it must be prior to this. 
for this is the quality of one. Hmm. By the way, we say in the highest sense that it is, don't we? We're talking about being as what is. But when we say that something is, we say it has existence, don't we? Right? It has being. It has vitality. It has intelligence. Does that mean that this has these qualities? The way this chalk has a color, size, shape? I mean, is, there, is this something, is it an it, that has these qualities? Or is it just all of these? Because if it has these, then there's something that must stand apart from this, and these are just its clothes, its appearance, its qualities. But if we say, no, 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 no. This is, must, this is what it must be. This is what it truly that's, that's it. That's what it is. Then we're not saying there is something behind it, as it were, that has this. But these are the qualities or the way in which it can be described. Let's call these the, dis the necessary description of it. Hmm. Well, look here. If there really is a one... If there really is one, we mean it in the most pure sense, don't we? We mean it can't be a many. Right? Well, it cannot be a many. <clears throat> but wouldn't you agree if this is a unity or a oneness, we can make these distinctions within it. And therefore, it's not a one, but a many. It's a one manyness. It's a one that has a manyness. So it's not the one. Now, sometimes we talk about the one with another name, the good. The reason we talk about the same thing with two names is because anybody who captures, guesses, gets a hint at, there's another part of us that wants to pursue what's good. And there must be therefore something that is good that makes all the things that are good, good. The highest good. Now, by a very interesting steps of reasoning, we can show that the idea of the one and the good are the same. But before we do that, let's just take the one for a moment. If the one can't be a many, then this can't be a one, for it's a oneness. And take it the other way. If the one is, then we're adding existence to the one, and that would make it two. That would be to say, there is something, the one. Now, you know what? It exists. Existence, therefore, qualifies it. <laughs> the one can't be said to exist. Could it be said to uh, 
have mind. No, for the same reason, it would then mean it's something that has mind. But if it is mind, right? if it is mind or intelligence, is mind one or is mind a unity and we can make distinctions within it? Knowledge, understanding, right? Belief, image thinking. Well, those are a unity, a oneness. So mind, if we mean by mind those things, obviously it can't be a one either. Hmm. But look here. If this one can be known, if it can be known, would you not agree by necessity there has to be, if, it's, if it can be known, there must be a way of knowing. And if it can be known, there must be a knower. Well, therefore, it's one, two, three. Presupposes one, two, three. Therefore, it certainly can't be known. For knowledge presupposes this three structure, doesn't it? Huh. Well, wait a minute. Can it be understood? Would that mean the same thing? Can it be understood? That means there must be a process to get you to understand it. There must be an understander who understands it. One, two, three. Uh, could it be perceived? Could it be an object of perception? Uh-oh. Perceiver. Perceiving. Perceived. One, two, three. One, we just have a one. Well, we mean by a one is a one. We don't want any three. So it can't be known, can't be understood, can't perceive it. Can it be an object of vision? But look here. An object of vision means that you can enter into it. You can experience it. It has a beginning, an onset. It may have a high point, or it may be continuous the same, but it does have a coming out. Hey, wait a minute. Then if you have a vision of it, it must have a beginning, middle and end, a duration. It must have a duration. has a vision, then I imagine you're going to say there must be someone who is visioning it and a process of visioning to get it, and then this becomes the object of vision. Well then, as massive and as brilliant, and this is called the most brilliant light of being, bliss as it is, is something you can go in and out of. And if you can go in and out of, has a point which you enter, points in which you leave it, has characteristics while you're in it, a unity, uh -uh, but with distinctions within it, that's a unity or a oneness. Hmm. Wait a minute now, we have to be careful about something. Are we, do we think when we say the one that there really is something that we call the one and give it a name? Well, then there must be some boundaries, some way of distinguishing it from everything else. Well, that's just one of the things then that are. I mean, if there is something, and we're going to call it the one, then the one is different than what it is. For the one is just the name of it. Well, then we have two things. We have what it is and the name, the one. Huh. And if it is a name, then it must be distinguished from all other names. And being distinguished from all other names, we can say it's one of the things that we can distinguish. 
and therefore in some way that must be. So if there really is a one, that can't be a many, well then you can't be talking about the one because you're talking about what you're naming and therefore there must be the thing and the name. We don't want any two, we only want one. So if there really is a one, it can't be named. If the one could be a many, like this is a many, right? if the one could be a many, then it's a many. There is no way of knowing. There is a knower and a known. There's a knower and known. Uh oh. There it goes. There's a knower and known. And they know they're a one. And if they know they're one, wait a minute. If they know they are one, they better forget it. Yeah, 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 right, right. If they are one, then they're not a many. Right. right. So I just showed And therefore they wouldn't know. I started out with a many and proved they're a one. So you can't have a many and be a one. Would you agree, though, that at, what, at any point where we say they are this, then we can't say they are one? No, I don't agree. You're, 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 okay, let's try it. You're befuddling my, my principle. Of course. <laughs> if each of these, right? if each of these, we know they are, you know, let's call one a number, let's call the other one a number. No. Right. No, no. And this is what they know? Or what do they know? They know that they're a one. They know that this knower knows they are one. And the other knowers know they are one. And so too for all the others. So therefore, the many know they are one. Right? So, so the many know they are one. Know they are one. Yeah. So they're all one. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a many and be a one. Well, just take a look now. Okay, by the way, um, do they know they are one? Sure. Watch them. Uh, when they know themselves as a they, do they know themselves as one? No. No, no, no. They know they are they know they are a group of one. They know they are a group of one. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. no, they know they are one. Okay. Each one knows there is they are a one. In other words, I am you and you are me, they know that. But, but see, if they know they are a one, then the one is in many. No, there are many. Yeah, of course they're many. There are but many. I totally agree. But they just know that they're one. If they know that they are one, do they also know that all the others are one? Yeah, sure. Well, then they know that the one is individual and distinct to everyone. Yeah, so they know that the many is a one and one is a many. Therefore, they know that the one that they know is a many. Right. Yeah. So, so and many can be a one, one can be a one. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. All right. Then, would you agree then, this one is different than what we're talking about a one, no, because all ones are ones. Of course all ones are ones. When all ones are ones, they know other ones are ones. Of course they, they one. Of course they know that all ones are ones. But now they know the other ones are ones. So they know there are many, but they're all ones. So well, what can you mean? Yeah, What's yeah. wrong with my logic? I mean, I, I know yeah, that's why I was just wanting to slow you down for a moment and see whether we could proceed <laughs> together step by step. <laughs> right? Now first, would you agree that there's something they know. Yes. Okay. If you mean that strictly, do you mean that they know that there is a knowing going on? 
Okay. So they know there is a knowing going on. They know there is a process of knowing going on. And what they know, what is known, is the one. So there are three things then that they know. Other than the one. They know they are ones. Well, well from what you're saying. They know they are ones. They know they're knowers. And they know they're knowing. Two. And they know that they uh, there's an object that they know. And they know there are many. Right. They know there are many. Well, look how many you have. Would you not agree at this moment, going slow, that this knower knows something? They know that they know. They know that they know, for they are knowing, I-N-G, process. And the fact that they know that they are knowing, that's different than being concerned with the object of knowing. For they know they are knowing. They know they are. They know what they know, right? Well, no, 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 don't change it. <laughs> then this is separate from the fact that they know the one. That's okay. Okay. From what you're saying, only. Number one, they know they're knowers because they know they are knowing. That's one kind of knowing. They know they are knowing. And they know in knowing, they know the one. Therefore, they are, these are three different kinds of knowing. It's all one. I mean, I don't mind you calling them each a one. The question is whether they are all together one, for they are different. Yeah, they are different, but they are one. Watch. If they are different, they're, they're random and they're periodic. That's okay. If they are, <laughs> if they are a many, you call that many a one, since each one of these is a one. Each one of these is a one. Yeah. Yes, and no, each one of these is, is the one. Pardon me, each one is different. No, each one is different. Pardon me, didn't you say they were different? No, I didn't say they were different. Watch them. I Would you agree different. they know they're knowers? I agree they know they're... They That's a knowing. They know, they know, they're, they're, they know they're knowers. Do they know, I asked you, whether they know they're knowing? You said yes. That's yeah. the second kind of knowing. That's different than the first. No, Pardon me, if you know... No, see, watch. You're stuck. No, 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 watch that. <laughs> it's very, very easy to see. Right, here. I, I'll agree with you here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't agree. Don't agree. It's, a, it's the same thing here with the perception. I, I see that. That means I am aware that there is, an, there is seeing that's different than the object. Yeah, but you're talking about seeing it as a chunk. I'm talking about seeing the <laughs> but, no, that's perfectly right. No, it's nothing to be sorry about. You see, the question is this one. Is that the question is this one. If the same dynamics, if the same relations or dynamics exist for seeing or perceiving, having an opinion, understanding or knowing if the same relations or funct or dynamic exists for these three and it's the same one two three process object you know if you pursue this you're going to say that only one person can see the one then you're going to make it exclusive it's going to be worse than that see i'm making it a mark no 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 I was going to make it worse than that. You make it work worse than that. It's going to make it. I'm going to make it worse, worse than, than that. Jeez. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. okay. All set. Sure. Finally, when we're talking about the one in this pure sense, right? There is no self. Oh, yeah. There is no self. There's Therefore, there's no, no need for democracy. No soul. There is no, there is no perception of the self. If one, well, that's uh, how many can be, can be a one. If one, yeah, they, it's the same self, but many. To, to they say all, they all thought they were different, but then when they became ones, they realized they're the same. Yeah. So there are many that were one. Yeah, don't mind that a bit. 
If you say things are the same, would you agree, in order for things to be said to be the same, whatever they are, there must be certain things about them that are not identical, or you right. wouldn't call them same. Right. Therefore, there must be differences. No, they just thought they were differences. <laughs> okay, then you don't mean same, you mean identical. And we can deal with that too. Yes, I'm lost now. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. <laughs> no, see, uh, this is precisely what one has to go through to play this game. And it's going to, it's going to pull from the, the reader or the listener objections. Must. Because we're finally going to say... Oh, wait, if, if there, are, there are many people in different parts of the planet, on the planet, each one of them became the one. Since there's only one one, they all of a sudden collapse into the same personality or something. You know, you draw, draw the earth and put three guys on it, right? And they're all they all, all of a sudden get a perception of one. Alright, boom, simultaneously. Boom, they, they perceive Totally one. agree with you. See, perception is sin. Alright, they okay, they perceive the one. Alright, this is the, the, the idea of the good, right? That's then, another then all of a sudden they then all of a sudden they give another jump. Then all of a sudden they become the good. Right, so now you've got many guys who are the one, mm -hmm. right? Because they're all ones. Mm -hmm. So now does that make them all, do they all of a sudden they get transformed and look alike or something? Or do they come with three triplets? Uh, or um, they, <laughs> they would probably, <laughs> they'd probably sit around and laugh. Well, she's right, because they, they couldn't, because they're all ones, no. there couldn't be a many. So couldn't they would many. disappear into the one. That's all we need, you know, for metaphys metaphysics to be sound and perfect. As soon as someone is enlightened, they should immediately vanish. And that would save a great many problems. And this, and this is one of them. Wait, you know why it has to be? Because it's impossible to find three people coming one at the same time. Okay, look, let's put it another way, all right? We can do this this way. Well, wait a minute, somebody becomes a one does disappear, don't they? Uh, they yes, the self disappears. So they, all three of them lose their self in the one. Yeah. So the many become Well, no, no, watch. They can't even lose themselves in the one. <laughs> well, see, you're, you're because there's guy. nothing in you're which you can guy. get in. So this guy, this guy, this guy, I'm saying there's this guy, this guy, this guy, and all of a sudden, dynamically, boom, they all become one. So the many can become a one. Become, that's what, that's the problem. Yeah. You're doing definitions, I'm doing dynamics. Uh, same thing, watch. Yeah. No, we can do this in terms of history. If we can f define what we mean by this, let's assume for the moment we can, right? then is it not likely that there may be people in different cultures that have reached the same notion sure. and therefore might be making statements about it? Okay. Then if they have <coughs> explored this rather strange notion right, and we set out their accounts, Among those accounts, we might say, you know what? There's several of these in the most strict sense that agree. Now, good heavens, you and I would ask, what would they do if they met one another? Would they lose themselves? What do you got there? You got three guys who are the one, right? Who claim, who make the assertion, they make the claim. Let's, let's, let's not get into the they are the one. Okay. They really are the one. Give them some credit. They are the one. Okay. So can, can three people be the one? Yeah. So you're saying the many cannot be the one. Right? Which the right. conclusion is, if, if one of those guys is the one, the other two aren't. Yeah, watch them. Okay? Notice your language. <laughs> Notice your language, right? right? They are each, so you're preserving the idea that they are still and remain unique while they are the one. Well, these guys aren't unique, they are the one. Pardon, pardon. <laughs> Therefore, there would nothing, there would be There's nothing. There's a limitation of language here. That's yeah. what I'm trying to make. Well, yeah, I am too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to preserve the fact that each, each of them happens to be unique, and that's why you say, that's why you say each of them. See, then we'll get into this dichotomy again. If there is a one. Yes. And this, if this search is worth searching, then, then each one of those people must have a chance of being the one, right? 
So let's just say all three of them become the one, right? Can there be can there be three ones walking about? You're you're saying no. Many cannot be a one. That's right. Many cannot be. One. That's right. You'll not watch them. Okay. But you're, I think the way you're arguing, let me see if I can help. So are they different does, of one? Watch. Does the one abandon itself to Become appear one. in each? Mm. That's what you're facing. Does the one abandon itself? Yeah, if there is a pure one. No, it would just be in each one Yeah, I know. But tell, hold this for a moment. Hold this for a moment now. Watch. Why do we split the one up now? I don't understand the reason there. You're splitting the, why would the one want to split itself up? This will Thank you. Therefore, it wouldn't. Ah, okay. Now, and therefore, this could not appear. So therefore, all three guys, if they met, they turned into one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one well, entity or something. Yeah, okay. They, at that point, they wouldn't know the difference. They couldn't see a boundary. Okay. They couldn't determine a boundary in terms of the clarity of their minds. So if they were in proximity of each other, they would be a one. No. And that would be a physical proximity. We're talking about the state of mind, aren't we? Okay. State of mind, all right. As far as the state of mind is concerned, each would be as clear as the other, with the utmost clarity and emptiness. But that clarity would be the one. Pardon? That clarity is the one. That clarity is the one. Is the one. Mm -hmm. So mentally they are the same. Among? Okay, but mentally they're the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, now, let's go back to your idea of clarity, all right? Okay, just, just to push it. The clarity, the clarity, that clarity, ah, okay. This clarity, is astonishing in one respect, it admits, believe it or not, of degrees. If you think about the Oxfording pictures, each one of those pictures is actually a different way of representing the perception of one. Now, in the description that you gave of the clarity, you used a very important expression that you could see things just the way they are is is just the way they are is just just the way they are is just the way they are. That expression, the way of using that language, is in the Plato's world, that's a perception of the one as grasped under the aspect of justice. Because in the Greek world, justice is not a legal term as it is in our country, in our culture. It means things are right just the way they are, each doing exactly what it should be doing, the way it's doing, it's perfectly right. A kind of intrinsic fairness to it all, a righteousness about things are the way they are. So in the Platonic world, that sense of clarity that you want to get to, is to return to, is this very, uh, very profound state, which is the doorway into this state of mind you experience in dreams called justice. Which in the Phaedrus is one of the possible visions one gains in the uh, intelligible world. So, uh, see, stay, let's stay with this idea of clarity. All right. In that sense of clarity, is there any sense of boundaries? Okay. Limitless, open, uh, vivid, 
clear. No obstructions. Perfectly transparent, like the empty sky on a clear, fresh morning. That's where it's going, see. It is empty of what? Of all obstructions, of all distortions. It's not empty in that sense of nothingness. And therefore, this admits of greater and greater degrees of being just the way it is. Um, it is not that that is, not, that is equally experienced in that state that we call before the idea of the good, but that's being carried aloft by a sense of beauty and a blissful state that the consciousness experiences. Um, yeah. Yes, please. Well, then and what are, are we, the only thing that makes sense that we could say is that the one is unknowable. It is not an object of knowledge. That's different. See, if an object of knowledge always presupposes this three-part division, then the one must be beyond knowledge. Plato has a very interesting way of talking about the good which later it's also called the one. Let me just uh, give you just one quick quote because uh, it's so interesting. Uh, then that which provides their truth to the things known and gives the power of knowing to the knower, you must say, is the uh, idea or principle of the good. See, that's what we had up a short while ago. That's the bliss. Yeah. Did you read that again? Sorry. Yeah, sure. This is at 508 E in book six. Then that which provides their truth to the things known and gives the power of knowing to the knower you must say is the idea or principle of the good. And you must conceive it as being the cause of understanding and of truth as far as it is known. And thus while knowledge and truth as we know them are both beautiful, you'll be right in thinking that it is something different, something still more beautiful than these. As for knowledge and truth, just as we said before, that it was right to consider light and sight to be sun-like, but wrong to think them to be the sun, so here it is right to consider both these to be good-like, but wrong to think either of them to be the good. The eternal nature of the good must be allowed a yet higher value. What infinite beauty you speak of, if it provides knowledge and truth and is above them, itself in beauty, you surely don't mean that it's pleasure. Hush! But there is something more to consider about its likeness. What? Oh, the sun provides not only the power of being seen for things seen, but as I think you will agree, also their generation, their growth and nurture, although it itself is not generation. Of course not. Similarly then, with things known, you will agree that the good is not only the cause of their being known, but the cause that knowledge exists and of the state of knowledge, although the good is not itself a state of knowledge but something transcending it, far beyond it, both in dignity and in power. Right? So the good is far beyond it, both dignity and power. It's not an object of knowledge, but the cause of knowledge. So you can buy the good? 
Pardon? To imbibe is a good? Abide. Yeah, so that's a good word. Imbibe. Imbibe. Yeah, that's imbibe a good word. Good. Yeah. Sometimes people call it uh, uh, things just drop away and that's, and that's all you can say. That's a negative way of putting it. Uh, some thinkers put it in terms of it's an in, it's one encounters. Meister Eckhart pulled it together and he said that uh, it's a Godhead. Because he said, you know, you can have the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He said, but the Godhead is really that which binds them together into a unity. And beyond that unity, that's the Godhead. So he's doing the same thing. So many couldn't be a one. Many, many couldn't be a one. Many couldn't be a one. Yeah. Many could not be a one. Yeah, yeah, right. right. So last, okay? It always comes back to this. So what must you do? In the Platonic world, both from, uh, especially from the good itself, there must be a return. Because with that comes a way of knowing and of seeing and understanding that benefits mankind. That's the return, going back down into the cave. And in terms of preference, in the Republic, when the philosopher comes back down into the cave to become, now he lives among them, uh, has to strain and get used to it once again. In terms of his own preference, he makes the statement, and he quotes Homer, and he says, you know, I'd much prefer to be the poorest slave to a landless lord than be master of all the dead that lie here. But it's thought, therefore, though, to be a duty to return and to return with that sense to improve mankind's lot. In some sense, then, that echoes to the Bodhisattva ideal in Buddhism. Only it's not a vow, it's a natural consequence. And so, it's time to quit. Any questions? And we play a few more minutes? Either that, I need to take a break for some water. <laughs> Hmm. I'll just be very, very obvious. What is the good? We're the one. We're the one we're the and what we, what I introduced you to, is in Book Seven, Plato's Republic. There's a dialectic then that must go from the idea of the good to the good itself. It's a negative. It's chopping away. It's chopping away all the assumptions that one might gain from the experience of the idea of the good or the most brilliant light of being or that blissful state that is encountered as the most brilliant light of being. Well, wait a minute, there's a problem here. Mm -hmm. Because if you can only imbibe the good, you can't imbibe the whole thing, you can't then, no matter what you're imbibing, it's never the good, right? I'm imbibing, imbibing a little this is good, a little that is good, a little this is good. You'll never be imbibing the good. So why all these arguments about yes. you know, yes. this is not the good, that's not the good? That's quite true. That's quite true, except for one thing. Okay. Right. Uh, the most remarkable thing about it is that those who uh, enter this right, always say the same thing. Oh my God, it's obvious. It's always been there. I didn't even have to search for it. I just had to drop whatever it is that was blocking my vision. And therefore, you're quite right, there's no need to search for it at all. Well, all we have to do is get rid of what's blocking it. It is in any place we have to search to discover it. That's my right frame face. Right, where can you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little difficult thing to say. Yeah. 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 So, oh, okay, so in other words, these, they all say the same thing. It's just, yeah, and that's why in the Platonic world the real object to study is ignorance, not knowledge or wisdom. You don't have to worry about that. That's what it is. That's where it is. You really have to discover your blocks, what's holding you back, what's tying you up, what's preventing the release. That's the most interesting object of study. So, I really appreciate your help this evening. All right. Thank you very much.